Hello friends, this video on separation of substances part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the next process that we will talk about is evaporation. So evaporation is a process in which water is heated to get converted into water vapor. So what is the form of water normally, the water which we drink, that is liquid form, right? So if you start heating water, the liquid water, so this is your liquid water which we consume. Now if you take it in a pan and you put it on the stove and you start heating, what will happen? You gradually see that after some time the water starts boiling and then the liquid water starts decreasing in quantity. That's because the liquid water is getting converted into water vapor. So this was liquid water which is getting converted to water vapor and this process is known as evaporation. So we say that the liquid water is being evaporated. So in order that evaporation takes place, what we need is we need heat. We need an increase in temperature because only that can convert liquid to vapor. So that is evaporation. Now you might ask that, okay, how is evaporation a way to separate substances? So let us take this example. So let us say that this is not plain water rather than this is salt water, maybe salt dissolved in water. So let's say you take three teaspoons of salt and and mix it well, stir it well in a glass of water, it will completely dissolve. So you will not be able to see the salt particles. Now if I say that can you separate the salt particles from water? Now that's very difficult because it has already dissolved. So filtration won't help, hand picking won't help, winnowing or threshing definitely won't help. So that is where evaporation would help because if you take that salt water and heat it, so all the liquid water will get converted into vapor. So by the time all the water has evaporated, what will be left behind in this pan? You will be left behind with the salt. So this is a way by which you can separate soluble substances from water because till now whatever methods we looked at they were all helpful in separating insoluble substances like sand or mud or clay but now you will also be able to separate soluble substances. Okay, in fact, this is one important method which is also used to obtain salt from sea. So from where do we get salt? The main source of salt is the sea because sea water is saline, sea water is salty. The water contains salt in it. Now, you might ask that, okay, but sea is huge. There is huge amount of water in the sea. So how do we kind of heat that water? So that's a natural process. Now, the sea is always exposed to the sun. So the, it receives the heat of the sun and that heat of the sun provides the temperature by which evaporation takes place. Now, uh, if you go near the shallow areas, I mean not deep inside the sea, this uh, evaporation will happen. But in the shallow, uh, in the in cert some certain seashores, some shallow pits are created, like how you see here. So they are pits are dug at certain areas and then the sea water is allowed to stand there for quite some time. Now, as long as the sea water keeps on moving, so proper evaporation will not happen. So you actually need a container where you can allow the water to stand under the sun. So that for that purpose, you dig pits like this. So you have pits here, the water stand there under the sun for quite some time. So gradually water starts evaporating. So the water vanishes off because it gets converted to vapor. All you are left behind is a heap of salt. So you see here, uh, so many heaps of salt have been formed. So that is how the salt is left behind and then further purification is done and that's how we get the common salt that we consume. So you see evaporation is such a, an important process. It helps to extract sea. It, it helps to extract salt from sea. So that's beautiful, isn't it? So not only separating salt from water, it also helps to separate uh, other substances. For example, sugar dissolved in water. So that also you can separate with the help of evaporation. Now, when we talk about evaporation, a question might come to your mind that, okay, the way liquid water is getting converted to vapor, is the reverse or is the vice versa also possible? Yes, it is. And that process is called condensation, where water vapor is cooled to get liquid water. So like in case of evaporation, what we did. 
so for when when we were talking about evaporation all that we did was we had liquid water and we heated the liquid water and then it got converted into vapor so condensation is exactly the opposite in condensation we are going to convert vapor to liquid now for liquid to vapor we heated it so if we want to convert vapor to liquid we need to cool it so that process is condensation so these are just the opposite of each other now let us look at some examples which proves that condensation happens because when i tell you that okay you take a pan of water and you heat it so the water gets converted into water vapor now if i tell you that the water vapor will get back converted to water so sometimes people do not believe that that okay the water vapor is lost in the atmosphere so how do we convert it back into liquid water so let us look at this example so have you ever noticed that when you cook something so that utensil is extremely hot right the food inside is very hot and the water vapor the vapors are being formed right now suddenly if you covered this hot utensil with a cold lead so the lead wasn't hot the lead was at a room temperature or maybe at a lower temperature so as soon as you cover it with the lead what do you see you see droplets of water on this lead on the inner surface of the lead so from where the, do these droplets come so these droplets are nothing but the water vapor condenses now as soon as you lower the temperature the lead is at a lower temperature so basically you are cooling down the temperature so as soon as the temperature is cooled down the water vapor condenses to form water droplets which are seen on the lead so the presence of these water droplets tell us that there was water vapor in the surrounding which got converted into liquid water when it was cool so that that's what so the the curry bowl was hot that's why you had hot water vapor and this lead was cold because of which condensation happened similarly think of another example you take out a cold glass of water from the refrigerator and keep it outside at room temperature for a couple of minutes what do you see you observe tiny droplets of water on the outer surface of the glass right so on the outer surface you find tiny water droplets so from where do you get this water droplets on the outer surface of the glass so it is nothing but the warm moist air which condenses because the glass is extremely cold so when you take it out from the refrigerator it is very cold now when you keep it on the table so the air surrounding that glass was already moist so the air which was present around surrounding the glass so these this air was like warm air now as soon as you cool it so this warm air contained water vapor so that those water vapor gets a condensation happens and the water warm moist air condenses to form liquid water droplets on the outer surface of the glass so this is another example of condensation just try it out yourself and you will get to know that okay yes condensation happens so when you uh, cool the uh, when you provide a lower temperature or when you allow the water vapor in the atmosphere to cool down so they get converted into water droplets and that process is known as condensation Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.